Hi everybody, this is Shannon, and uh, we're going to work through a couple of uh, cartography-based mini-lectures, um, just covering some of the very basics. Uh, take this information if you want it, if you need it. It's not necessary to do the labs. Uh, I just want to make sure that you guys are getting exposed to as much as you want to or need to. Um, I think cartography is a good place for us to start because effective conveyance of our results is so constantly important and it has a lot to do with your street credibility as a scientist. Um, you want to be taken seriously and if you put together a sloppy figure or map um, I think that you do tend to lose like, a lot of credibility. So this is just part one. It's the basics of cartography and page layout. Kept really simple. I want to focus first on a couple of just beautiful maps and just show you that um, maps can be done in a whole bunch of different ways. Creatively, I mean, I can't even imagine loving maps enough to sit down and scroll paper like this, but Amber did. Summit Ridge Studio produces these beautiful watercolors, cityscapes, um, just kind of um, building footprints against streets. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. You know, are they conveying information? Who knows? Um, these guys, I think, are really interesting. Sometimes maps can be just for pure, pure beauty, and sometimes they can be so beautiful and actually contain a ton of information. This is an aerial photograph taken currently from Google Maps of the exact same stretch of the Mississippi. Uh, back in the 40s, Harold Fusk went out and hand-mapped the terraces of the Mississippi River um, and built this massive um, record for us. And he's turned them into these enormous high-resolution plates. Um, they actually print like massive posters, and they're gorgeous. But you know, if you look out on the landscape, a lot of this is still there. You can see that, that remnant heart shape here that's represented. You can see how the channel has now cut down um, using these cutoffs. And these, these little oxbow curves have been abandoned. Uh, you can see a lot of these same forms and shapes on the landscape, even though it's all being farmed now. I just think it's a fascinating look. This little channel has completely rerouted itself. So yeah, maps can be beautiful and incredibly informational. Daniel Coe has been producing some gorgeous Im images from LIDAR. This is a straight uh, LIDAR DEM of the Willamette River as it goes out to the coast uh, and with a one simple color ramp from white to dark blue. It couldn't be any simpler, and yet it just evokes these beautiful, smoky images for us. So um, I just hope to inspire you a little bit that maps can be incredibly informative um, and still be beautiful, uh, inspiring, attractive, and they can convey a ton of information. I actually have a map that I used to show um, that were, in fact, uh, oh, maybe I should just pull it up. I'll, I'll do that at the end. 50 years of tornadoes and uh, what John Nelson did here is actually plotted the direction and duration of the tornadoes and then uh, symbolized them due to their intensity. We've got um, the, the deaths, um, the F scale, all of this stuff built in, but I think it gives you this really great pattern that you wouldn't see if they were uh, mapped by a proportional symbol or something where you just had a point and it was bigger or smaller depending on the ferociousness of the tornado. Um, I think the color is electrifying, um, you know, I don't mean to be punny there, but it's just a beautiful way to uh, show us the spatial distribution and the trajectory of these tornadoes over time. Um, yeah, so cartography, I think the, the point of this whole thing is, is summarized here by somebody who isn't, you know, necessarily a great cartographer or known to be a great scientist, but said it well. An ugly map with crude colors, careless line work, and disagreeable, poorly arranged lettering may be intrinsically as accurate as a beautiful map, but it's less likely to inspire confidence. I think that's what it boils down to for us. So let's make beautiful, effective maps. All right, so your traditional, formal map ought to contain certain elements that help us understand the data that's being presented. Title. This is um, typically what you're showing and where is it located. A legend obviously helps us understand what's going on in a map, what the symbols represent, what the colors represent, but please note that you don't ever have to label a legend a key or a legend, it goes without saying. Keep your map simple. Scale, uh, we're going to talk about what these mean in part four of this lecture, uh, the different types of scale that you need on a map. Sometimes they're necessary and sometimes they're not. I'd argue that if you're ever showing 
um, a map of something that has a known and defined border scale is not necessary because it becomes intuitive. Um, if you are measuring something specifically that's a road map, um, I take that back. Scale does become important. North arrow. Arc map traditionally makes everything north up. We're used to seeing maps as north up. A north arrow, I think, is pretty easy to leave off a map just because people tend to assume this. Now, if you're ever showing something where north is not up, then some sort of orientation is necessary to help your audience get um, oriented. <laughs> Uh, the date the map was created or updated. This is important stuff as well as the map author or who created the map. This um, also gives your map a lot of credibility. So given that, here's your traditional formal map. You've all seen these, you've used them, you've made them. Um, hopefully it's pretty, pretty straightforward. You've got your main map body. An inset map um, can show either a close-up or something that's missing. Uh, locator maps might zoom out and show where the United States is relative to the rest of the world. Um, you've got a legend. Notice it's not called a legend. Here we do have scale. I would argue that um, the scale is not necessary. If the scale is shifting between these two, then it is necessary. So maybe it's not necessary here, but you might want to include it for these guys because the scale is different than in your main map body. Um, orientation, title, data source. I do require you when you're making a formal map or providing a figure to let me know where the data has come from. This is a good habit to get into. It's just like sort uh, citing any source that you use. So in the, in the lab instructions, I always tell you where the data is coming from. If you go find your own data, I expect you to include the data source or data credits. Um, and that's what that would look like. Here's the author. Projection is sometimes necessary. I'd say more often than not, it's not. So there you go. This is a very traditional map that ArcGIS allows you to create very easily. And I just want you to avoid these kinds of um, novice mistakes when you're making a map. Um, so traditionally, insert a title, the location of Ethiopia in Africa. Great. Um, it's very redundant. It's very uh, mind-numbingly boring. Um, you would never put title in your title, right? And you would never call your 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 map a map. So avoid mistakes like that. My map of Ethiopia in Africa. Don't do that. North Arrow is never this important. It's not a big decorative icon on your page. This should be simple. It should be small. It could be embedded down in your legend. But don't hog and distract. I mean, here it's the same size as the thing you're making the map about. Don't do that. This is called your data frame. It's also called a neat line. That's totally cool. Um, use it to organize your page. I would recommend setting it inside um, equally and using consistent margins, but whatever. Here's your source block, very important. I hope none of you know poor Carl Reeder, who I'm trashing right now. Uh, here's your legend. Again, you don't need to call it legend. You don't need to say African countries because we already know that from the title. All other values is a big novice mistake that GISers do using ArcGIS. Get rid of this. Uh, we can talk about how to do that later. Ethiopia, I think this entire thing is absolutely unnecessary. You could label it. Um, you've got it in the title. It's the one rainbow-colored um, country. Really isn't necessary to have this in any way. And scale. If you are going to include scale on a map, if you want it to look like one of these big graphic surveyor bars, that's great. But notice that it's, it's a very distracting graphic image on the page. Um, I would say simplify it and just have zero and maybe 2,000 kilometers or 1,000 kilometers. Uh, you don't need all these divisions. No one cares how big 350 kilometers is. You might want a scale bar that tells us, you know, generally how wide is Ethiopia. That might be helpful. Um, but again, this is really gloppy and distracting. So there's my uh, map critique for you. So good maps have strong visual balance. We're going to go through each one of these very quickly. Um, they force the viewer, whether they know that they're being forced to do it or not, focusing our eye on what's important provides good visual contrast, which brings us back to helping us focus on the things that are important. Um, text placement, these are more just sort of traditional mapping choices, and then appropriate color. So visual balance. Um, when things tend to be even like this, our eye doesn't know what's important, and it, we kind of bop around a lot more. You want to strive for asymmetry on the page, larger block, more important, supporting information. So main map, supporting information, metadata, whatever it is. But remember, too, that uh, at least in this country, we tend to read top to bottom, left to right. So this is a good way to structure it. You might even take these elements and drop them to the bottom. So we have most, oopsie, most important 
the second most important, and then the tertiary information down here. That's why this is a strong one, top to bottom, left to right. All right, focus and attention. Um, this is picky stuff, but this is the exact center of the page, but our optical center tends to be a little higher. That's why we, when we frame art, tend to leave a smaller margin at the top and a larger margin at the bottom. It's just the way that our eye tends to focus on a page. So, you know, keep that in mind or don't. It doesn't really matter. Our field of focus uh, and then the fringe. Remember, we tend to move left to right, top to bottom, and you can just, in the back of your head, think about optical centers versus geometric centers. Okay, so contrast. When you look at a page like this, what is your eye drawn to? Mine is drawn to the big, dark thing, where there's mo most contrast between the foreground and the background. Um, secondarily, just because of size here, and arguably here second, just due to the contrast. So again, this is talking about visual hierarchy, which the next slide is also about. You want the most important things on your page to be the biggest, the boldest, and have the, higher, the highest contrast between the background. We also want to think about top to bottom, left to right. So um, yeah, this is, this is just an example of strong hierarchy, top to bottom, left to right. We've got really big things with high contrast, but our boldest fading down to the least. Our eye here knows what to do more than it knows what to do here. Here it's just like, ah, I don't know where to go with this. It's just big equal treatment of everything. So weak visual hierarchy, strong. And I will be providing feedback about all this stuff. Those of you who have had classes with me in the past know that I love talking about visual hierarchy. All right, proper text use, this is up to you. Um, ArcGIS does provide traditional uh, cartographic text styles for rivers, for lakes, for towns, for roads. Um, it's all in there, so just think about it. Don't be, don't hesitate to use the defaults. It makes sense, and it's what people are used to seeing. So, uh, go for it. Color, color use is really important. Um, we have issues with color blindness, and we want to be consistent with all people, um, depending on on how you see. There are websites that do offer help for setting things. Um, if you have to pick your own color ramps for things, but um, know again that ArcMap can spit out billions of colors, okay, millions of colors, um, but we really don't ever want to use all these at the same time. And there are some maps that do that. We've got land cover maps that have so many categories of land cover that you get stuck with these really messy, messy maps, and it can cause a lot of confusion. And there's just no way for a user to go in and use a legend or a key when a map has this many colors. It's just impossible to differentiate them. So be careful, classify, um, do what you can to avoid those kinds of maps. Um, the second thing to think about is um, not lying with your maps and actually being intuitive. So if you look at a map like this that says average annual snowfall, you might think that they get quite a bit of annually, get a lot of snow here, but really aren't dealing with a lot of snow in the surrounding area. And if I uncover the legend for you, you'll see that, wow, in the green areas, that's where they're getting 80 to 90 inches of snow a year. Okay, this is a lot of snow. That's like almost seven feet of snow. <laughs> so this is what I would call lying with maps. Um, and so you just want to be careful. Make sure you're using intuitive colors, right? Um, it just, uh, this is a great book in case you're interested. It, it not only deals with color and symbology, but talks about how you can classify data. Uh, it talks a lot about politics. And uh, this is a, just a great read if you have any interest in stuff like that. Okay. Briefly, uh, you won't be using elevation legends right off the, right the get-go here, but if you haven't um, heard this before, if you haven't heard me get on my soapbox about this before, there are really great ways to make legends, and there are really shoddy, beginner, um, novice ways to make legends. Number one, when you're displaying images, you don't ever want to have your color bands in the legend. No one cares about this. It doesn't even ring as true because they all mix together and you don't have these. But this doesn't provide any information for your viewer. Leave it off. Um, always get rid of underscores. ArcGIS takes your raw data and pops those in the legends. You have to go through and edit these and make them um, understandable. No jargon, no lingo, no underscores. So and make sure you're cleaning up your item legends. Sorry, your legend items. Um, Elevation for DEMs, absolutely critical on some maps, not always, but Hillshade, this is our display tool that gives us that nice terrain. This is never important and never something that you want to include on your legend. Yes, put it in your map, 
but no, don't put it in your legend. Remember that these values just tell us what color bin gray it is. It has nothing to do with elevation, slope. These values are absolutely meaningless. It's just the color of gray, so don't ever include these on your legends. Elevation, absolutely, but what's the one thing an elevation value needs to have? Units. Absolutely must have units. We don't know if this is in feet or meters. It's not up to your audience to sit there and, and reason that out or have to Google it. All right. Make sure you're always including units for your elevation legends. Now, on top of that, I don't know why I did that. Um, here are some really beautiful examples of an elevation legend. So this student actually broke it out uh, slightly categorically and included units. But notice the nice round values. Right. Same here. The color, I mean, sorry, the elevation comes in with these, these raw numbers, but does your audience care if black, black, black is 2639 or is maybe 2600 legit, right? So think about rounding these things so that it's digestible for your audience. I think these are both really beautiful elevation legends. So units, round and simplify, and leave your hill shade off. All right, so uh, just as a quick exercise, how do you make an effective map? Um, if I gave you five minutes and told you to sit down and just make a list, it's like boggle, right? Just shake the timer and make a list of all the things that are wrong with this map. Um, I'm hoping that you would say, first and foremost, what is your eye drawn to? So if you squint your eye a little bit, what does your eye get drawn to? And mine actually comes over here, which is interesting. You'd think these dark colors would attract my eye, or the red, but I think there's the lack of contrast over here, and here we have a lot of contrast. So number one, the north arrow is never that important. Number two, don't use cartoons. Yes, this is an ArcGIS a north arrow. Unless you're making a cartoon for a kindergarten class, I can't imagine any reason you'd ever use this. We don't need a blue drop shadow on a lime green north arrow, and we definitely don't need to be this big and left and uh, centrally placed. This should be tucked away. And number two, this is the most important thing about our map. It should probably be on the left, or if we want to go to portrait, it should be on the top. Um, title is arguably the second most important thing. What's going on here? Can you tell us? It's a potential flawed zone. It doesn't tell us where, it tells us what, and it spells it wrong. Please watch your spelling. This is a huge, like, how am I going to take anyone's science seriously if they can't spell check their titles? So. Um, nice um, subtitle here. This is good. We still don't know where. We should be able to look at our map and get a clue, but we have equal treatment of everything. No labels, nothing. So we can assume this might be the flawed zone, but it's not a very dangerous color. It's actually pretty subtle and soothing. And instead, we have these crazy red things. Well, is this a river? Is this a road? These look like rivers because they're blue. So remember, hydrology, blue, lakes, rivers, ponds, streams, save blue for those things. If we go to our legend, nothing's been edited or cleaned up for us so that we know we've got something called a river, FL2 temp, don't know if this is temperature, maybe it's on fire, uh, maybe it's a temporary file, we don't know, it's not our job to figure that out, so clean it up. Uh, Missouri, Alabama, Tennessee highways, probably, but again, now we know that this is probably Missouri, Alabama, Tennessee, but we don't know where. Um, oh, these are counties, great, and then we have this thing where is the blue to help us figure out what this means? There isn't even this blue on the map, so this is another big no-no. Don't include crap in your legend that isn't even on the map. Um, population 2007. Popcorn, um, popular, I don't know. Uh, it's not a very helpful thing. Maybe a city name would be more important, and you would never put messy values like this on your map. Last but not least, we've got a, a scale. It's got nice round values. It's a little graphically uh, distracting, but nautical miles are not an appropriate union, unit unless we are um, really expecting this to flood, in which case we might be canoeing and maybe nautical miles do matter. But it's certainly not helping us orient ourselves. All right, so how can we do this better? This is a slight improvement. I would argue that you know, intrinsically a flood zone uh, probably shouldn't just be a circle on a map. We do have the power with GIS to um, flood channels like this using elevation rasters, and so we probably want to uh, create a real flood zone and really map the flood plane here. Um, but basically, this section of these states, and now they're labeled and colored so that we can actually see where the state boundaries are. Uh, this is the area that needs to um, pay attention. So red, 
danger, good, blue, rivers, good. The counties have been downplayed. We have a little bit stronger hierarchy here with our symbology. And the cities have been labeled. We're not so concerned with, with um, the proportional symbols. The roads have been labeled. Uh, this is much more usable. Our north arrow is diminutive. It's set into the map. It takes a back seat. Um, our title is big. It tells us what and where. Um, we've got some helpful information, a clean legend, again, doesn't need to say this, but it doesn't hurt, um, with nice metadata. Okay, so be effective and logical. That's it. Um, I will catch up with you in part B, which is about um, classifying data.